So before we get into this episode, we just wanted to thank our sponsors, Boss Play. Boss Play. They are an escape room out in Oceanside, California. They have two different escape yes. rooms, uh, the Prohibition Ransom and the Chocolate Factory. If you think you are good at doing puzzles, good at playing games, you need to go try an escape room. If you do puzzles good. If you are good at puzzles doing, you need to do an escape room. Because it's like you put yourself in the puzzle. To be their tagline. Yeah. Put yourself in the puzzle. Put yourself in the puzzle. You can find them at www.boss-play.com and uh, see if you can escape their rooms. Put yourself in the puzzle. Taylor and Alan talking about movies. They may be best friends, but they always disagree. Taylor and Alan. I seen that. Uh, Taylor. That's me. Mr. Enixon. That's my father. Uh, he, have you seen The Good Place? I have. Okay, so we just started the first season and then two episodes in. Uh-huh. And I hate it so much. Do you really? I like it. Do you? I heard it was good. Yeah. I started it because people said it was good. And these first two episodes are awful. What don't you like about it? Uh, it, it, it's not funny. The premise is, so the, the biggest thing, the thing that I I was talking to my wife about is like this show really, at least up until this point, the show should have been focused on her, uh, soulmate. That's where all the conflict is in the whole show, uh, at least in the first two episodes is the conflict should be between him being a good person, trying to take care of his soulmate but realizing that she's a bad person and that he's like in this conflicting area of like, should I rat on her, which would be kind of against what I believe or should I help her, which is also against what I like. That's where all the conflict is. It seems like it's just going to be her dismantling the good place, which is heaven is what the show is setting forward, which just seems like such a boring idea. Similar to um, New Girl, right? Did you ever watch New Girl? Yeah. The So is, I don't know if this is going to sound sexist, but Mindy yes. Project, New Girl, and The Good Place. Uh, I Again, I've only seen two episodes of The Good Place, but I've seen almost all of the other ones. The characters are these, are these women who don't really have their life together and are kind of mm-hmm. like just kind of you know, these goofy characters, but they don't grow at all. They don't really change. And so what happens is all the surrounding, the supporting characters outshine them. And they're the enjoyable parts of the show where the main character is just kind of exhausting because they don't, they don't change. Um, I haven't seen Mindy project, so I can't speak on that, but I have watched New Girl, and with that, I will agree. Um, yeah, in fact, I it's hard to even like that show at this point anymore. Mm. I, I we used to really like it, and then it it hit this really low point, um, probably like two seasons ago when Megan Fox showed up, right? No, it was even before that. Oh yeah, I would say it was before that, but it did that didn't help. Um, but I would say the last season, are you caught up completely? Uh, I think so. Yeah. I, I think if I'm the not, last season was, it, was pre- oh, I don't really remember it, but yeah. it wasn't bad. It, I thought it brought it back a little bit. And then the upcoming season is going to be the end. So mm. we'll see what happens. Yeah. But I will say that um, Good Place is not like that. No? Okay. That's, no. That gives me a little bit more hope. At least not in that regard. You don't have to worry about that. Yeah. Yeah, I just I was just so bored these first two episodes. There's like nothing going on and like all the jokes all the jokes are like I, well they're not jokes. <laughs> it's kind of the problem. It's just like this this you you're supposed to infer a lot to appreciate yeah. the show and uh, I just was really bored with it. But what do you think of Ted Danson? Um he he was fine. I mean, they're all. Because I love Ted Danson in this. Yeah, 
Well, like, so up until this point in the first two episodes, she shows up and eats all the shrimp and then Mm -hmm. giant ladybugs attack. And then in the second episode, she uh, wants to go flying, but her soulmate wants her to clean up garbage. And so she ends up sneaking away and causing a, a garbage storm and they clean it up. And Ted Danson is like panicking because he messed up. Mm-hmm. But that's pretty much all his character does at, up until this point. Um, um, I would say just watch it, get through the first season. Yeah. And then, and then see how you feel. I, I, I think it's worth it to see where they go with it. All right. We'll see. That's that's all I can say. I'm not saying you'll like it. <laughs> I'm just saying you should watch the whole season. Yeah, yeah. I think the premise it's, is is funny. It, it's yeah. But I, I feel like they're at, at least again. I don't I don't know why I keep having to preface everything I'm saying with that. I've only seen the first two episodes, but at least from what I've seen, they're just riding the momentum of the premise being funny. Like they're not doing anything with it up until this point. And it's not even right. like because they're establishing it. It just it just feels very lazy and slowly paced. Like it's it's paced like a drama, but shot like a comedy. Yeah, I could see that. It's uh it's it's written by the dude from the office. Yeah. And uh Michael Sure. It was also uh Brooklyn nine nine. Not he didn't write that, but it was the same Yes, same yeah, yeah, guys yeah. Are doing it all, and so I expected it to be more like that. Which Brooklyn Nine Nine is probably one of my favorite comedies. Really, mm. it seems like something that you wouldn't like. I don't. We I really enjoy it, mostly because I like it. So <laughs> it's one of the few that I actually laugh watching, and that doesn't happen a lot. Is it? Hmm, that's. I could see it. it, it it's it, that. That's a funny show. Yeah, I think because. Prof, 90% of the main characters are all funny. Yes. And I feel like when you have a big cast uh, comedy, there's always going to be a couple that aren't funny and then like you dread you dread their scenes. Yeah. Which is how I am with Modern Family and it's gotten to the point where I dread almost everyone. <laughs> yeah. And like I only like a couple people and I like celebrate if if someone doesn't have like a couple scenes in, in a certain episode or if it's like really short mm. because they're just so unfunny to me that it ruins the whole show. Yeah. We, uh, we used to watch modern family and then we kind of phased out the last couple seasons cause it just kind of got boring, but that's how it's I was really with not the, good. the middle. Did you watch the oh, middle? I love the Yeah. We love the middle. And, uh, we just were so, it just got so exhausting. Um, so the middle is like, the opposite to me of of modern family right where like at first I, di- I didn't really care for it like the whole first season we watched it and i was like it's i mean it's not bad uh and then it it, it, it had a very slow uh incline but then the last uh, couple seasons maybe the last three including the one they're on now which is the final season i feel like they they hit their peak mm. so i think it's pretty funny um it just started feeling really repetitive. Like, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's, I don't know. There, I, I could see, I, I could see what you're saying. Yeah, I think. But Modern Family, I feel like started high. Yeah, you know, it, mm-hmm. it like came out real strong, and it was probably up at that peak for the first three, four seasons, maybe. Yeah. And then it, it kind of started declining, which I feel like a lot of comedies do around the fifth, sixth season. Yeah. Uh, and then once it got to like seven, it like crashed. And now it's just like at the bottom. Well, like, And it'll have its moments, but not really. Yeah. Similar to like what I was talking about with like New Girl and the Mini Project. When I think sitcoms especially are really difficult to maintain because it's hard to... If your if your comedy is based off of ignorance, off of your oh, relationships yeah. or whatever, like just based off of yeah. like not exactly. being aware, kind of being aloof, right? Like so, the dad from Modern Family is like this goofy character. It's re- yeah. it's really hard to have character growth and development when you rely mm-hmm. when your comedy relies on immaturity. 
And so seeing five seasons, like with Michael Scott, Michael Scott's character got so played out towards the end where it's just like, oh, this is, it's, it's too much. Like the same note over and over and over. See, I felt like, I felt like they did something good with Michael. Like I felt like they started him off as like a really obnoxious, horrible boss, right? Mm -hmm. Then it's like, and it's one of those, they set it up to where it's like, everyone knows someone like this. Maybe he's not your boss, but everyone knows this kind of person. But like they, then they, they kind of, cause like the first season, mm-hmm. I don't know if I enjoyed Michael Scott like at all. I know it's only like six episodes, but it's super like uncomfortable. Right. Yeah. And then I think from then on, mm-hmm. like it gradually got to where it was still like that, but in a more funny way, like, you know, they made it bearable. Uh, and then, like your later seasons with him, he's still like he's still that same guy. But I feel like they showed a lot of like kind of what makes him like this, mm-hmm. and you you get the sense like he doesn't one he doesn't realize how, how bad he can be, and like you, you almost I don't want to say like you feel sorry for him, but you empathize. Yeah. Well, I think um, just because he's just has he's. He's got a very like uh, one dimensional life. Nothing went the way he wanted it to go. You know, he never got married, never had a hundred kids like he wanted to have, and like he acts out like a child. Because mm. um, I think it's even implied like I, I I don't think he had a dad. Like I think he had a stepdad who he didn't get along with. I don't know. They make it to where he's still dumb, but he's not so obnoxious that it was like unenjoyable yeah. for me at least. Yeah. And like, you know, they, they make it to where like, it's, it, it's sad when he leaves, you know? So, yeah, I, I think what happened with Michael Scott, the reason why his character uh, works or is, is still enjoyable is because the other characters uh, grew and kind of drug him along, you know, like yeah. you have Jim and Pam's relationship getting deeper. You have, Dwight's character and Angela's relationship growing and changing and all all the characters have decent development. Uh, Michael Scott, the comedy that his comedy was always the same note, you know, like just kind of unaware and like just obnoxious. Um, But the heart stuff I think was drug out of him through the other characters. I don't know. I don't know if I would say he had a lot of growth, I don't think he had a huge mm, change throughout the series. I mean, he did a little bit here and there, like um, especially when uh, his girlfriend, what's her name? I can't remember. Holly. Holly shows up, right? I think you start to see him more as a character, as one of the main characters versus Jim. Um, Yeah. But... Mostly the the comedy was more was more my point was that they they always used him as the same same source of comedy and I I think yeah. if it wasn't for everything else if it wasn't for all the other characters like you know making you more invested into the stories and stuff like that like because your your desire for uh like Jim and Pam's relationship to succeed is what made Michael Scott's uncomfortableness such a, a, a tension breaker. Like um, you would have, it would, it would kind of be almost jarring his, like yeah. and, and not, not necessarily in a bad way either. And that's not what I'm saying. Like you'd be so focused on this one thing that when Michael Scott's character would come in and do something obnoxious, it would like change everything up and catch you off guard. And that's what would be enjoyable and fun about the show. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. I, the one one thing that I that I that I say is I I think he definitely became more self aware uh, towards the end um, about how people feel about him. Yeah. Well, there's and that think that one great that, great scene with Oscar. With yeah, when he gives him <laughs> <laughs> he gives him this like piece of crap trash that he made as like a going away gift, and Oscar was like real gracious for it. And then it just shows him laughing. Yeah. He's like, he has no respect for me. (laughs) He thinks so lowly of me. 
Yeah, no, I thought that was great. But I, I also don't think that was necessarily in his character up until that point. You know what I mean? Like, I think it was, like, I think they earned it, and I think it was a, a great moment. Uh, but well, I, I think he had a, a similar, uh, less funny moment with, like, Stanley. When he, right, when he yelled at him? Yeah, and then basically that whole thing kind of ended with, like, look, I know that you don't respect me, but I'm your boss, so. Yeah. You kind of have to. Yeah. No, you're right. I, I, he also had a moment with Jim about the birthdays. He's like, yeah, I, had, I, I try to put all the birthdays on the same day, too. And, like, he's definitely he's definitely not the worst character at it. Like, like, with, uh, like we were talking about Modern Family, the dad in that, where he's just... Right. I don't know. Yeah, you... Yeah, I, I know what you're saying. There's definitely... A, I think there's... His changes are more subtle. Yeah. Um, my out of everyone in that whole show, my favorite. I don't want to say my favorite character because he's definitely not my favorite character, but my favorite character development from start to finish is Ryan. Mm. Right, because he he goes from being the lowly temp who you know is clearly like way smarter than. Like he he should be doing better things than a temp at a paper sales company. Yeah. And then he rises up to, you know, what not the CEO, but whatever position it was. Yeah. And then he has a, a huge crash. He goes to prison. And then he comes back and he's like, I don't even know how to describe the kind of character that he is. Um, And then ends up abandoning his child to leave with <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> like his, 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 his character development is like, all over the place, yeah. right? He well, I, and it, I, I like, think it's I like consistent, it's, though. I think. Oh, it is. No, it's definitely consistent. But I like. I think it shows how toxic of a place Dunder Mifflin really is. <laughs> oh man, that show! It's a it's a really good show. It it it, it is. I agree. Um, a lot of sitcoms, I think, don't hold up very well on a second rewatch. Like I imagine. If I went back and rewatched How I Met Your Mother, I would. It wouldn't be as good. Yeah, I would not like it nearly as much as I did the first time. But The Office seems like it holds up because the, the the stuff the, the 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 funny parts, the important parts, the moving parts are based on relationship more than situation. Yeah, you know. Um, yeah, so they're relevant at at any time. Yeah. Um. One one thing I was going to say that I think really hurt a uh, new girl was that there's two things that happen in a show where it could either like really ex- like take off or really crash. And I think most of the times it crashes. That's when you get like the two main characters getting together and it's like too early. Mm hmm. Or main characters, you know, main cast members having a child. Yeah. I think that really can ruin a show. I think The Office did it just fine. They they put enough, you know, time in there uh, for both mm-hmm. things. But I feel like uh, in, in New Girl, Nick and Jess getting together, that's when, in my opinion, like literally the episode or the episode after they like officially got together, it crashed. I don't know. I just like it sucked. Yeah, I, I didn't enjoy it anymore. Um, and then kind of like with how I met your mother. Once Marshall and Lily had their kid, I felt like it really declined after that. Yeah. Well, the, a lot of the jokes in How I Met Your Mother became very like uh, tropey, very uh, because easy jokes. Like yeah, exactly. Um, I think uh, and talking about the main characters getting together i think brooklyn 99 it has done that in one of the best ways where it is a part of all the story but mm-hmm. it's not it's never been the central focus the well and that's what i was gonna say that's why i think it worked on the office was because there's so much else going on that like it can happen simultaneously with everyone else's lives yeah. Uh, but like in in uh, in New Girl, it was the focus, right? Because mm-hmm. they think, well, this is what we've been building towards. This is what everybody wants. So here it is. 
and then it just I don't know. I didn't I didn't like it. And and then literally once they broke up, that's when the show got better. So I don't know. Yeah, no, I agree. I think Friends is, had had an issue with that too with the Ross and Rachel stuff, but they were so aggressive in changing the tone of their relationship uh, each time. Oh, really? That yeah. uh it would help kind of move past. So there would be like this big moment that either put Ross and Rachel together or put them apart. And it wasn't a lot of like, I, I mean, it's always been, will they, won't they type thing, but it wasn't like, uh, I don't know. It wasn't, you kind of knew where everyone stood. Yeah. Um, but See, friends think, is not great yeah, by the way. I don't know. <laughs> I started, I, I, I still haven't watched it, but well, you know, really you can go it. and watch my breakdown of each episode on our, our YouTube yeah, I probably will. <laughs> we'll see. I started. We'll see. I started doing that two weeks ago. Uh, the first two episodes are up, but I know yeah. you know. I know you're very up to date on everything that we're doing. Oh, of course. <laughs> um, the I was gonna end with saying I I feel like, and I know you're not a huge fan, but I feel like Seinfeld did it that way where they didn't introduce really either of those things, uh-huh. and I feel like that's why it was able to last as long as it did yeah and, and there was no kids um and then there was no big relationships like the closest they got was george almost getting married and then his wife dies but they make it like funny so and then like that's it like it's just these four terrible people continuing to live their lives yeah i heard this pretty good theory about seinfeld that said because uh-huh. everyone says oh it's a show about nothing Right? right, like uh, nothing. There's no, like, no premise or thesis or whatever right. to the each episode and the show in general. But that it's actually it's not that's not really true. It's actually a show about how a stand up comedian writes his material. Yeah, I could. See, yeah, that that does make more sense. And that it's kind of like because every episode opens with him doing stand up and ending with doing stand up. And it's not always like directly tied to it, but it's loosely tied to it, what happens it, to the episode. Right. And so it's like, it's showing if you, if you watch it with the idea of like, Oh, this, this moment of his life is what brought him to writing this bit down. It like, I think it's a, a, maybe not more entertaining, but it's just kind of an interesting way to think about it. Right. Because it, I mean, it, loosely is based on that like you know this is a lot of the stories that happen in Seinfeld either have really happened to him or to Larry David yeah. and then they use that in their routine and then they got a show about it and then even within the show the exact same thing happens and he gets his own show about it yeah. and then <clears throat> it's yeah so I guess that is I don't know if that's even really a theory. It's more like, I guess it's a theory. I don't know, (laughs) but it makes sense. I'm open to it. All right. Well, uh, this was kind of a unscheduled sitcom episode, but I think that's all right. We've had this one on the books for like two weeks. (laughs) I've been doing a lot of research. I have this. I have the script here in front of me, (laughs) uh, over on Patreon this week. We have, uh, 10 Cloverfield Lane, an episode on 10 Cloverfield Lane coming out on Sunday. And then on Wednesday, uh, the Cloverfield Paradox is coming out. Ooh. Exciting stuff. Those were uh, interesting movies for sure. Interesting, yes. And then we would like to thank our sponsor, Boss Play, for helping out our show, helping us doing everything. Also, everyone else who supports us on Patreon, you guys are super awesome. They're kind of awesome. Mostly. They're somewhat awesome. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, you can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and we will be back in a couple of days. Side note. Oh. If you really want a show that is truly about nothing, I would say probably Always Sunny is more along those lines. Uh, you sort of. I, I think Always... Because I'll, I think they have the same basic where it's just about these four, five people mm-hmm. that 
are are terrible. Obviously, they're a lot worse, and they get into more ridiculous situations. I, but there's no over. I mean, I think. Well, I think the the idea behind Always Sunny is taking sitcom characters, like say Seinfeld characters, and putting them in the real world. Taking people who are so self absorbed and so yeah. focused on themselves and evil. Like every sitcom character is, um, uh, what is the word? Why can't I think of it? Is uh, a a narcissist? Is that what I'm trying to think yeah. of? Nar- yeah, yeah. I feel like that's not the right word. But uh, anyways, they're so self absorbed, so they only care about themselves and willing to do anything. And the only reason why we don't notice is because there's a laugh track for the most part. Like yeah. Seinfeld, Friends, all this, all these shows. They do these terrible, terrible things, but the laugh track helps and then the fade to black helps and then they just move on from that. And Always Sunny is like, (laughs) well, if these people really existed in the real world, this is what it would be like. This is how it all go down. Because in in sitcoms, generally, the main cast are terrible, but the world treats them as good. And then in Always Sunny... They play the same characters, but the world reacts to them as you would in real as life. As terrible people. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's kind of what Always Sunny is, is doing, is playing with. Yeah. Which is no, genius. Which is one of the best oh, sitcoms. Oh, it's fantastic. I love it. Also, Arrested Development is another good one. Oh, for sure. For sure. But uh, yeah, that's the end of sitcom, sitcom, sitcom talk. Sit- Sitcom. Sitcom speak. I don't know. Correct. 